I love small single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. They are a fun and easy way to deploy a multitude of services and a really great way to experiment with different systems that you may not be used to. Heck, I got my first real taste of Linux while messing around on my first Raspberry Pi back in 2017. And while the Raspberry Pi is still around, they may not be the best option anymore. I've suggested them to a few people recently and after hearing that you have to buy the Pi itself, a case, the cooling system, power supply, storage, and a bunch of other things and kind of assemble it yourself, they were often deterred from purchasing it and would much rather have an all-in-one solution. But that's why I'm glad Icewell sponsored this video to show off their Zima board, a single board x86 computer that is an all-in-one package that has quite a bit of features compared to its predecessors and spoiler alert, I think it's the type of device every tech enthusiast should have on hand because of its utility. So I'll go over the specs of the device and walk you through some ways that you can easily put it to use and why I think it's pretty cool. Now if you're unfamiliar with single board computers, all you have to know is that this device right here is a computer. Yes, that's right. This tiny little board can operate as a full standing desktop computer, but because of its size and its IO, has a lot more utility for many different projects that isn't just a one trick pony. The Zima board comes in at only 138 millimeters by 81 millimeters with a height of only 34, meaning it can easily fit behind a monitor, on a network shelf, or even in a drawer somewhere. The design incorporates the heatsink of the board into the hacker aesthetic and allows it to stay cool without any outside cooling required. The ports on the front of the device are two gigabit RJ45 ethernet ports, two USB-A 3.0 ports, a DC power in, and a micro DP for video output. But that's all to be expected. What's not to be expected are these two SATA ports on the back end of the device. This will allow you to plug in two different storage drives directly into the board and not have to use USB adapters like on other single board computers. The Zima board comes standard with a single SATA and power cable, but if you want to utilize two drives, they sell the Y splitter separately for just a few dollars on their website. Using this, you can have full speed drives utilizing RAID so your device can have a full RAID configuration for real server redundancy. But what makes the Zima board really unique is this piece jutting out the side of it. This is a PCIe X4 lane, which is just insane to think about. <laughs> Having a PCIe lane on this thing opens up an entire world of possibility on what you can use this thing for. You want even more SATA ports? No problem. Want a bunch of USB slots? Sure. Want 10 gig networking speeds? Yes. Want to add two M.2 and VME drives? Easy. Having this PCIe lane open to use provides you an insane amount of utility for whatever project you are working on at the time. Now I'm sure you are wondering if graphics cards work in it, and the answer is, well, kind of. But the CPU really isn't strong enough to turn this into a modern gaming PC, and there isn't enough power to fully push a gaming GPU, so don't get your hopes up. Speaking of the CPU, the Zima board comes in three flavors. The cheapest among them is running a dual core N3350 Celeron chip. It has two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. Now the 32 gigs of storage is standard across the board, but as you move up the price pipeline, you will see an increase in performance. The next one up is an N3450, which is a four core CPU and comes with four gigs of RAM. So twice the RAM and twice the cores. And the most expensive version is the same CPU, but it comes with eight gigs of RAM. Now, if you're considering buying one of these in the future, it might be easy to just go with the cheapest or the most expensive and call it a day. But I think you should really think about what you want to use it for and if you are going to want something better in the future or if maybe what you got is a little overkill. I will say at the time of this recording, the cheapest variant on Amazon is about $90 after any coupons are clipped and the mid-tier option is only about $10 more. I personally think doubling your cores and RAM for 10 bucks is a no-brainer, so I recommend either going with the middle tier or the 8 gig variant depending on your use case. Now these are all 6 watt TDP CPUs, so no matter what you pick, this thing is going to run quiet, it's going to run cool, and it's not going to hurt your power bill. This thing runs on very little power, so even if you live in a region with very expensive electricity, you probably have very little to worry about. Out of the box, the Zima board comes pre-installed with Casa OS which is an operating system based on Debian that is actually created and maintained by the Zima board creators themselves. And I actually kind of like it. It's a really simple UI to navigate and makes installing Docker containers really quick and easy. You can obviously plug in a monitor into the mini DP port to get to the screen, but it also supports headless operation. So once it's connected to the network, you can simply plug in the IP address of the device and access it from your main computer and do whatever you want on it. But what can you do on it? 
Well, a lot of things actually. Let's say I have some friends coming over and I want to play some retro games, but my console just broke. Well, I can install a copy of Emulation Station to the Zima board, which is an operating system based on Linux that allows easy access to a bunch of emulators and a nice front end. I can upload all of my favorite games to it, plug in two USB controllers, and hey, I'm playing all my old favorite retro games without any issues. Or let's say you want a NAS or network attached storage, but don't want to go out and buy an expensive standalone machine or a big and bulky home server. You don't have to install TrueNAS or Unraid, you can do it all within the built-in CasOS. Just by plugging in your drives and navigating to the Files app on CasOS, you can easily choose how you want to share your files on your network, and it's pretty fast too. And you don't have to use the SATA ports if you don't want to. If you have an external hard drive already, you can simply plug into the USB port of the Zima board and be good to go. The CPU inside the Zima board supports H.264 and H.265 transcoding, so you can easily turn it into a simple home media server using Plex or Jellyfin. In CasOS, you can simply grab the container in Docker, let it know where your media is located, and boom! This tiny PC is now streaming your favorite movies and TV shows anywhere on your network, or if you're able to port forward in your home router, you can even access this anywhere in the world. There are two Ethernet ports on the Zima board, which means you can install something like OpenSense and create your very own router. That would allow you to ditch the crappy one your ISP gave you and unlock a ton of features they may not allow, like static IPs, VLANs, and port forwarding, so you can take back full control of your network. And honestly, the list goes on and on with how you use this thing. And as always, you can utilize that PCIe lane to help you get to where you want to go. But I think the best way for people to use this is if you are new to all of it, meaning you don't know anything about Linux, virtual machines, Docker, NAS, networking. If all of that sounds super confusing to you, owning something like this might be the first step to unlocking all of that knowledge. Having a separate device that you're able to break, reinstall, fix, and change anytime you want to try out and test as much as your heart desires is a really great way to learn a lot of fundamentals when it comes to home labs and networking. I personally learned a lot of my own knowledge on a single board computer, and I'm sure any home lab vets watching this might have as well. But if you aren't new to all of this and you're wondering if this thing is for you, I think it could really fit into anyone's bag of tools as an easily deployable computer that can solve most problems you need on the fly. I personally don't have mine deployed long term in my home at this time, but it gets pulled out just about every week for some kind of testing or service, and I'm glad it's small so when I'm called to do tech support for friends and families, having this in my bag won't be a hindrance. If you like single board computers but would rather see how I DIY'd my own home server, check out this video here where I went over all the hardware I used in my personal home server recently. My name's Jason, thanks for watching.